What's going on, everybody? Josh Engelman for AwesomeMode.com, and I am back with my FanDuel top five plays for quarterbacks, running backs, wideouts, and tight ends for week 11 in the NFL. Now, be sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell so you know when this and all of our other content goes live. Follow me on Twitter, at Josh Engelman, so you can get updates to these sim results as we get closer to lock. I'll have at least one, maybe two, over the weekend, and then you can find me on our NFL strategy show at 9 a.m. on Sunday morning or on NFL Live Before Lock at noon. Either way, you can find me and I will have some updates for you. Finally, let me know in the comment section, who is your favorite tight end, wide receiver, running back, and quarterback for this week's slate? We're starting it off looking at the tight ends. Number 10, Austin Hooper. Number 9, TJ Hawkinson. Number 8, Dallas Goddard. Number 7, Eric Ebron. And number 6, just on the outside looking in at tight end, that would be Hayden Hurst. It's time to dive in. Who is number five? <laughs> this worked out perfectly. I didn't know that it was going to work out like this, but it did. Number five, tight end. Taysom Hill? Yeah, that's right. 4,500 has the tight end eligibility. No Drew Brees. We're going to see Taysom Hill probably get some snaps at QB. Probably get some additional snaps, just generally speaking. Projected for 6.9 fantasy points. It's a really nice spot. Five point favorites, 51 point total. Falcons are 28th against the pass. Like the, the signs are there for Taysom Hill to have a nice day. And at 4,500, it works. He's not going to go crazy, or at least you don't expect it. Going north of 30 fantasy points, 0% of the time. But this looks like a really nice spot to game the system. I have no issue whatsoever going to Taysom Hill at tight end. Taking another step forward in tiers, though, number four, Noah Fant, 5,700, taking on the Dolphins. We know the pass defense is pretty good. Uh, they are eighth against the pass in defensive DVOA, 29th against the run, which doesn't help Fant that much, but could open some opportunities up for better passing situations. Broncos, three-point underdogs against the Dolphins, 45.5 point total. It's not a really appealing game. There's not too much to like here other than it's just generic. I assume Noah Fant goes for around 8.4 fantasy points. That's the projection I have in now. He can show up in the optimal lineup about 8% of the time. It's hard to get super excited, but there's really not a lot to like at tight end this week. And that's enough to just put Noah Fant at four. We're sticking in the same game, but we're going to the Dolphins side. Number three, 5,300. That's Mike Gusecki. Three-point favorites, 40 half, 45 and a half point total. A defense that's middle of the pack against the run, middle of the pack against the pass. There's not a lot to write home here. He's just a very, very, very tiny hair ahead of Noah Fant. Look, you're hoping for, you know, six for 60 and a touchdown. That that gets you where you want to be. Where, you know, that'll, that, that'll be what, three, nine, 15 points? You'd be thrilled. You'd be absolutely thrilled. It's tricky at tight end. Mike Kosicki goes for less than 10 fantasy points 70% of the time. That means 30% of the time you're basically happy. And even then, you're probably not, like, super stoked. That is an indictment on the position this week. But there are two guys that look pretty good. The first of which comes in at number two, 13% chance of being in the optimal. You can see we took a very large step up past Gusecki. That's Mark Andrews, 6,500, projected for 10 fantasy points. Baltimore's taking on Tennessee, five-point favorites, 49.5-point total. Tennessee, 25th against the pass, not very good. You're not expecting a monster day out of Andrews, but I think it's very realistic to see him get to like the 15-plus range. Shows up in the optimal 13% of the time. That's a really big number for the tight end spot. It's hard for anybody to separate that much from the pack. But it's crazy because he's not the only one that did it. Coming in as my number one tight end, 5,500 for the Chargers. That would be Hunter Henry. And it's a matchup play. Nine and a half point favorites. 46 point game total. And he gets to take on the worst pass defense in the league in the New York Jets. This one looks fantastic. I wouldn't get too bogged down because while I say that Hunter Henry shows up in the optimal 13% of the time, that actually just means that 87% of the time he doesn't. Don't get too married to any particular tight end. But right now, Hunter Henry and Mark Andrews are separating themselves from the pack. There is a clear tier at the top of Henry and Andrews. 
before you take a pretty sizable step down to Gasicki and the rest of these guys. Love getting to Henry, love getting to Andrews. The Chargers stack will look pretty good as we will see as I move through this video. But for right now, Hunter Henry is the number one tight end on the board this week. Now we transition to the wide receiver position. Julio Jones, number 10, Adam Thielen, number nine, Calvin Ridley, number eight, Terry McLaurin, number seven, and Michael Thomas coming in the outside, looking in at number six, 8,200. Who is going to be in the top five pushing Michael Thomas down? First guy up is Will Fuller. Will Fuller, the fifth at number five. I didn't plan to do that. That just worked out for me. Maybe I should display the numbers in Roman numerals. 7,100, relatively pedestrian, 12 and a half point projection. The half point PPR brings it down. Two and a half point underdogs, 49 point total. The benefit here is that the Patriots defense is dreadful. 31st against the run, 30th against the pass. Will Fuller goes for north of 30 fantasy points 7% of the time. Shows up in the optimal 14.5% of the time. Love getting to Will Fuller here. I was a big fan of Watson on DraftKings. We'll see if he gets there on FanDuel. But for right now, Will Fuller, top five wideout. Thanks to the Patriots and their stinky defense. Now at number four, we've got Robbie Anderson. The quarterback position for Carolina, a little bit up in the air. I don't think it matters all that much. He's 6,300, taking on the Lions. Game's a pick 47-point total. You expect there to be some volume in the passing game. And the Lions defense isn't very good. 27th against the run, 23rd against the pass. Anderson goes for north of 30 fantasy points. A little north of 4% of the time. Shows up in the optimal 15.5% of the time. This feels like a really nice spot. You're not worried about Detroit. It does give you a little bit of concern if it's not Teddy Bridgewater, but I think we can get by. Robbie Anderson is good enough, and the salary makes sense this week. Coming in at number three in a virtual tie with Robbie Anderson, we've got Justin Jefferson. 6,700 with a 13.7 fantasy point projection. Taking on the Dallas Cowboys. Vikings are home. Seven-point favorites. 47.5 point total. Cowboys run defense stinks. Their pass defense is passable, 18th, so you know, slightly below average. Jefferson can go north of 30 fantasy points 5% of the time, and he shows up basically the same amount of times as Robbie Anderson. You can go either direction here. Don't mind stacking up either side of this. You can see that Jefferson and Adam Thielen both showing up in the top 10. If you want to go for a pretty big Viking stack, I don't mind that at all. That's enough to get Justin Jefferson into the number three spot. At number two, we got to pay a lot for it, 8K, but I think he's well worth it. It's Keenan Allen, 15 and a half point fantasy point projection. We know the Chargers taking on the Jets. Jets not very good. Uh, big favorites, the absolute dead last pass defense. Keenan Allen goes for north of 30 fantasy points, 9% of the time. Really big number for a wideout. Shows up in the optimal 16.6% .6 of the time. That's another step up over that Jefferson and Anderson tier. I love the Chargers stack. Allen clearly a good pairing. If you want to go heavy on the Chargers, you can grab Hunter Henry as well. But he's not enough to get to number one. Because at number one, we're spending big time. 9500 for Devontae Adams. Packers, really tough matchup. It's at Indy, so at least we're indoors. Packers are underdogs. Two and a half point dogs with a 51 point total. I think that bodes well for Devontae Adams. The problem here... Colts defense, fourth against the run, fourth against the pass. It's a kind of scary matchup, but not scary enough that you want to get away from Devontae Adams. Goes for north of 30 fantasy points, 12.5% of the time, well north of Keenan Allen. Shows up in the optimal 18% of the time. He's just really difficult to avoid. Devontae Adams is so good, and I'm not going to overreact to a difficult matchup. I'm going to look closely at the line and the total, which says, I expect some offense in this game. And if there's going to be some offense, I expect it to run through Devontae Adams. Now we move to the running back position. Number 10, Miles Sanders. Number 9, Aaron Jones. Number 8, Derrick Henry. Number 7, James Conner. And number 6, last week's favorite, although not so much on FanDuel. That would be Mike Davis. Didn't make it to the top 5 this week. Had trouble passing number five, and that is James Robinson. 7,200, shows up in the optimal 15% of the time, so we're taking a little bit of a step above Mike Davis. Jacksonville's in a tough spot, though. Uh, Ten and a half point underdogs, 46 point total against the Steelers in Pittsburgh. Steelers defense, top five 
overall, six against the run, second against the pass. But James Robinson's involved in everything. He's going to get carries early. If the game gets out of hand, he's going to get work out of the backfield in the passing game. I think he's involved no matter what. Goes for north of 30 fantasy points 5% of the time. Again, shows up in the optimal 15% of the time. I know it's not a great spot from a defensive matchup, from the fact that the Jags just aren't very good, but Robinson should still be involved no matter what. I don't think the touches go anywhere. I'm going to take the bet on the touches at 7,200. Now at number four, we're going back to another guy that wasn't very fun to have last week. That would be Duke Johnson, 6K. Houston taking on the Patriots. Patriots defense isn't very good. I'm not going to use last week as a reason to get away from Johnson. You can see Johnson significantly higher chances of being in the optimal than James Robinson. Patriots defense bad, whether it's the run and the pa- or the pass. Duke Johnson's involved in both sides of the game. You're not expecting the crazy monster game out of Duke Johnson. Only shows up north of 30, 3.5% of the time. But if you can get him into that 20 fantasy point range, you're going to be very happy at 6K. That's why Duke Johnson shows up at number four. Number three is going to cost you a pretty penny, but it's another step up in tiers. 9,700. That's Alvin Kamara. 18.4 fantasy point projection. Taking on the Falcons. Big total. Indoors. Gets to have Jameis Winston involved. I don't know if that's going to be a benefit or not for Kamara. Seventh ranked defense against the run. 28th against the pass. You know that Kamara is going to be doing it in every way. He's going to get the carries. He's going to get the targets. If he gets in the end zone, he could easily pay off that $9,700 salary. Goes for north of 30 fantasy points, which is kind of what you're going to be looking for out of him this week because of the $9,700 price tag. 9.3% of the time. Optimal lineup, 18.8% of the time. That's the big step up. But he's still behind two more guys. The first of which, DeAndre Swift at number two. 6,900. These guys are separating themselves into individual tiers. DeAndre Swift shows up in the optimal lineup 23% of the time. That price tag is difficult to get away from. Lions are in a pick 47-point total, and a bad Panthers defense. Whether that's against the run or against the pass... Carolina's 25th or 24th. That's not very good. Certainly doesn't make me nervous to get Swift, who had a really nice week last week. 7.5% chance of going north of 30 fantasy points. But a quarter of the time, you're going to see DeAndre Swift in the optimal. This spot is great. I hope that people sleep on him because it's a perfect DeAndre Swift week. But if you have to roster any running back on the slate, it's worth it to go to the five-digit. $10,500 $10,500 Dalvin Cook, Minnesota taking on Dallas, seven point favorites, 47 and a half point total, and the 28th ranked run defense in the league. Dalvin Cook's carving up everybody. I don't see a single reason why you can't do that to a bad rushing defense in Dallas. 22% chance of going north of 30 fantasy points. We see him do it regularly at this point. chance of being in the optimal. I love the Cook-Swift combination. I don't think that it's too expensive. There's enough ways to save some salary. Guys like Taysom Hill at tight end in particular. He's just too good. Dalvin Cook is fantastic. I love this play. I'm not worried about the price tag on FanDuel. Find a way to get him in your lineup because he is in the optimal more than any other running back on the slate. Now, before we get to the quarterbacks, one last reminder to please hit the like button. It means a ton to me and it helps me out tremendously. Subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell so you know when all of our content goes live and the biggie is following me on Twitter at Josh Engelman so you don't miss a thing. I'll have updated sim results over the weekend, in particular before I go live at 9 a.m., NFL Sunday for our strategy show and for our live before lock show at noon. Don't forget to drop into the comment section and let me know who your top plays are at each position. Now it's time for quarterbacks. Coming in number 10, Jameis Winston. Number nine, Carson Wentz. Number eight, if we don't see Teddy Bridgewater, it's got to be PJ Walker. Number seven, Phillip Rivers. And number six, Big Ben Roethlisberger. He's on the outside looking in. But who's number five? That would be Tua. 6,700 at Denver. Uh, They're three-point favorites, actually, in Denver with a 45.5-point total. Middle of the pack defense for the Broncos. 11.5% chance of going north of 30. Shows up in the optimal 6% of the time. You see the difference at quarterback compared to running back and wideout. You get these big numbers into the 20s. There's not a lot separating Tua at 5 from Jameis Winston 
at 4% or well at, at 10, 6% to 4%. I got a lot of questions of, you know, where is so-and-so from last week and at, at quarterback in particular, the difference between five and 15 is really not all that huge. It's hard to get that sort of separation. It's all about who you can bring with those quarterbacks. So I like Tua, but 94% of the time, it's a different quarterback. I don't need to get too crazy, but I do think he's my number five quarterback. That means there's four guys ahead of him. Woo. And at number four, 7,700. And as you can see, a clear big step ahead of Tua, that would be Deshaun Watson. 21.7 fantasy point projection. The Patriots defense, as I mentioned earlier, is terrible. Whether it's against the run or against the pass, Watson should carve this team up. 49 point total and slight underdogs. That makes me really happy because you expect Watson to throw. He goes for north of 30, 19% of the time. And an 8.2% chance of showing up in the optimal in the four spot. I like those odds. Clearly very easy to stack up with someone like Will Fuller. I like that combination. I'll be going to it this weekend because you don't want to pass up a chance to take on arguably the worst defense in the league, maybe the second worst defense in the league. Don't skip those opportunities. Go to Deshaun Watson. Now, if Watson's not your guy, number three, 8,500, you can go to Justin Herbert. This is the worst pass defense. The Jets are terrible. Nine and a half point favorites, 46 point game total, a 19% chance of going north of 30. And you guys know that my dogs are barking. You guys can hear that. Say, what up to Riggs right now? Riggs is really a big fan of Justin Herbert. And if you guys can't hear my dog barking, then just assume you hear a dog barking. We already know Keenan Allen is in the top 10 for wideouts. We already know that Hunter Henry is in the top 10 for tight ends. That makes for a perfect combination. The Herbert, Allen, Henry combo, however you want to do it, just quarterback plus a wideout, quarterback plus the tight end, quarterback plus both. All three of those combinations work because the Jets are bad and all of these guys should be in your lineup. I love, love, love the Chargers stack this week. Taking another step up, 10% chance of being in the optimal. I'm going to Cam Newton. And for a second, I almost talked about him as if he were the quarterback for the Panthers, but that is not the case. Quarterback for the New England Patriots, 7,600 at Houston. Houston's run defense, dead last in the league, 32nd. A mild benefit for someone like Cam Newton, particularly in the red zone. Pass defense only 20 seconds, so it's not like it's anything scary. Slight favorites in Houston, almost a 50-point game total. Cam can go north of 30, 21% of the time. You're really hoping to get a, a little bit of rushing work. Some rushing touchdowns would be massive, but I have no reason to get away from Cam. Really like him this week. The matchup is fantastic. And finally, the number one quarterback on FanDuel this week, it's Lamar Jackson. 8,400, 23.1 fantasy point projection for the Baltimore Ravens. Taking on the Titans and their subpar defense. 19th against the run, 25th against the pass. This just feels like a spot where Lamar Jackson kind of gets right and really puts a, a stomping on the Titans. Goes for north of 30 fantasy points 24% of the time. You can see 2% more often he's in the optimal compared to Cam Newton. So 12% to 10. You see the difference between one and five. The difference between Lamar and Tua, pretty big. But from Tua down, it's all pretty similar. Lamar Jackson is without question my favorite option on FanDuel. In particular, those rushing touchdowns could be huge here. Uh, the running backs, the wide receivers, they don't get the benefit of the bigger numbers from the full point PPR. And that makes your quarterback a little bit better relative to the rest of your lineup. If that's the case, give me Lamar Jackson's legs. I'm expecting him to get in the end zone on the ground. And that is an excellent base for your quarterback. That'll do it, guys. Those are my top fives. Well, kind of top tens at quarterback, running back, wide out and tight end. Thank you guys for joining me. Find the link somewhere around here. If you play on DraftKings, there's a DraftKings version of this video. I will be back on Thursday for a special Thanksgiving edition of the top fives for DraftKings and for FanDuel. And then you'll get it again on Friday for the big main Sunday slate. Good luck this weekend. I will see you guys again Thanksgiving morning.